hi everyone i'm just checking that you can hear me okay so do let me know if you can hear me that would be great i'm really excited about today and i know there'll be more joining us we're just starting a little bit early just to check that everything's working all right hey you can hear me that's wonderful so uh just preparing here um sorry excuse the noise we're just going to talk about Facebook today, as you know. I have to laugh, you know, every time I tell them I'm going live, you know, they still <laughs> end up coming in and banging doors and all. It's like, what is going on? I swear, I'm so seriously thinking of getting an office, honestly. Uh, hi, Kat, lovely to see you. Kat, we still have to get together and do our routine. You have to wait till I come back from New, Ze from New Zealand. Actually, might be in Dublin. I'll talk to you later, right? Um, so... Uh, we're very delighted and very excited to have Louise here. I will get her on screen now. I'll invite her on. Uh, I want to say, is everybody looking forward to the kids going back to school? Tomorrow my daughter's going back, so that should be interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm going to invite Louise on. Louise, as you know, um, she spoke at the social media so much about Facebook and she's really impressed me with all the stuff she's been doing lately. And, you know, she's a lovely person too, which always helps a lot. And um, she's also very glamorous as well, I must add. Uh, but she knows her stuff about Facebook and I've known her quite a while online. And I have to say, I find her, her content is very, very good. So I'm really excited about today. I know a lot of you are, and I know there's people joining us right now. Hi, Marie, lovely to see you. Have you cornered the house somewhere? No, I don't, this is the only space I have in the house. It's a small house, Marie, but um, it's not that I tell them every time that I'm going live, you know. Hi, Louise. Hi. Can you hear me? Lovely to see you. Yes, we can hear and see you. And Kat has just commented, Louise is fab. Lots so I'm getting one of those screens. You know those screens I've ordered at off Amazon? So I'm getting a screen and I'm going to get my microphone and my light and all. So I'm going to do all that. So um, uh, lovely to see you, Louise. So do you want to tell people a little bit about you and how you've got to this stage so far? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is that my microphone? Oh, my microphone? I think so, yeah. Might be too loud. I'll just turn it down. Yeah, that's better. Okay, um, move it away from me. Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah, they can. Yeah, Good. the comments um, are on the right hand side there. Yeah. 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 Hi, Marie. Hi, Kat. How are you? Hi, everybody. And um, thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Samantha. I'm here smiling. So, so, not, so nice to um, hear nice things being said. So my background is marketing. So um, digital marketing didn't exist when, uh, when I was in college. So um, I did smart marketing and service marketing. And then um, I worked, I fell into a job in the, in the 90s in Dublin. It, I, want, I was desperate to have a marketing role. I didn't care where I worked. And um, I, I started working for one of the earliest e-commerce companies in the country. And at the time, e-commerce was just um, private, um, kind of um, business um, documents like invoices and purchase orders sent over private networks. So that was all EDI. And I worked there for seven years. And I suppose that's where I really, I, I think I got a, a great understanding of the foundations of digital marketing. So um, I, I've had my own company since 2009. Um, my, I set up my company because I was made redundant after I had had my twins. So um, uh, starting off, I suppose, was something that it, was, it wasn't really a choice. It was something that I had to do. Um, but I, I, I was really lucky. One of the first things that happened to me was I... Um, made it onto the e-panel for um, Falter Ireland and I started training and mentoring for them and from there I went, I went on to the local enterprise offices and, um, and I've worked I suppose um, in the area of um, um, digital marketing since then. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard me on about my book, um, this book, The Never-Ending Story, but um, about two years ago <laughs> Yeah, uh, after one of my training courses, I got a phone call from a friend of one of the people who've been on the course, and they said, I think you should write a book. So it's been in my head since, and I started writing it last summer. And um, we're just picking covers for the book now, so it's actually going to print in the next few days. But I'll tell you a funny story. My dad said to me, I was showing him what covers, you know, what, what did he think? And he said to me, is this the second book, Louise? I said, no, it's the same one. I just keep oh, talking man. about it. 
yeah. there's five so funny. Yeah. Oh, no, oh that's. that's yeah. So um, yeah. So my second. So my my second book. My book. My my only book is coming out. Um, whenever it comes back from the print, so it's going to take about four weeks to print. So um, you know, I thought I was going to write this book in ten weeks, but it was more like ten months. So I can't wait till it's actually on the shelves and that I don't have to prove it anymore. That's a wonderful achievement. Well done. Good for you. I'm delighted for you. And we will absolutely support you. Um, are you having a, a physical launch for it or anything? Or? Yeah, I'm going to have a launch. I, 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 this is another talking point. It's been talked up and down, inside out. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. It's like a, it's like a wedding. Um, I'm going to launch it locally because <laughs> I worked for seven years um, in the Chamber of Commerce in Balaná. I was CEO mm. there, actually, and that's why I know Joanne, Joanne Sweeney Burke, because she was in Letterkenny Chamber when I was in Balaná, so we knew, knew each other really well at the time, but um, I'm going to launch it in Balaná because I'm still really well known there, and I think I'd probably get more people to go to an event in Balaná, yeah. but my plan is then to do a bit of a road trip. So I was thinking of, you know, if there's any business organizations, I'll come and do, you know, a free, a free talk and then um, sell, sign copies of the book. So that's my plan to, to do a road trip. Um, you know, obviously when, when I have copies of the book to go with. So yeah, that's the plan. So yeah. So are you self-publishing the book then? No, no. Um, I actually said I'd send it off to some publishers um, and that if nobody took it up, I was just going to self-publish. But I got um, actually the Liffey Press in Dublin are publishing it. So, yeah, wow. it will, yeah so it will be available in bookstores all around the country. Um, but I mean, in, I think, you know, yourself, Samantha, you have a book like that. You still need to push it yourself, you know, so nobody's going to push it as much as you are. So I'm fully and I don't mind. I actually love there is nothing more than I like than getting in my car and going off and doing training or a presentation on Facebook. I love it. I'm so sad, but you know, so, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it now. Do you know, it's like when I started training, I, and I'd come back to the office and I'd say to Charlene, who worked at me at the, with me at the time to try and, and anyone who trains will know this to try and actually position the training at the level that people benefit the most from it. And it mm -hmm. took me, years to get that right so mm -hmm. that's why I feel I'm ready to I was ready to write the book because I was actually I, I knew exactly how I was going to structure the book that it would help businesses and I deliberately didn't buy one Facebook marketing book I haven't looked at anybody else's because I didn't want it to influence me so this is how my book is structured around how I th think Facebook should be taught um, and so that I maybe you know Hopefully that'll make it stand out and be different. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, great. Okay, well, um, well, well let's go ahead with this training then and um, let's uh, make the most of the time we have. So thanks everyone for joining. I see that uh, Jill is here, Marie. Um, Dee, Louise is here, <laughs> Marie, D O'Leary is here and Kat. And you see people sometimes watch the replay if they can't make it. Uh, so yeah, let's go and fire away. Are you able to share your screen or what you need to do? I'll just leave the floor to you and I'll keep an eye on questions, okay? If anyone has a question, there's a little space at the bottom there on their left-hand side that says, ask a question. And if you ask your question there, it will stay there so we can go back to it at the end of the presentation. So if you want to ask your questions there, that would be great. Thanks. Over okay. to you. Perfect. So um, can everybody see the screen? Is it a bit small or do, is there anything else I can do to make it bigger? Hang on. If you click on yourself. I think you can make the screen bigger and um, there should be a little thing, the icon on the top of your picture. Is that right, Marie? That you just click on that and makes the screen bigger. But it's okay. We can still see it. Okay, and will I put it in presentation mode? There's like four corners. You can just make it a bit bigger, Louise. Here, I've done it there. How's that? I've done it there. Yeah. Has everyone okay, seen bigger okay. now? Okay, so I'm just I'm um I'm actually going to yeah that's actually I'll come back because I can't see you so I need to okay brilliant that's even perfect okay brilliant okay everybody so um. Thanks so much for joining this um, webinar. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to working through the next 30 to 40 minutes. I hope everybody's got pen and paper with them because I really want that at the end of this training that you have some 
um, concrete ideas, some real ideas of content that you're going to start pushing it on your Facebook page right away this month. Okay, so um, ooh, how do I move this presentation along? Okay, so um, thanks very much to Samantha for the introduction. If anybody wants to check out my website, it's louisemcdonald.com. And I also have a pre-order page there for the book because I'm trying to get an idea of demand. So please feel free to, to go on and have a look and there's more information about it as well. Um, okay, so just to, I suppose, as, as, as before we start, what I really wanted to do is to just let people know how popular Facebook is. Um, when you look at the figures there, and these are figures from January 2017, 64% of the Irish population have a Facebook account, and 74% of those users log on at least once a day. So in Ireland, every single day, we have over 2.2 million daily active users. At any given day, you have the opportunity to reach a large audience on Facebook. And in fact, if you look at the other social networks, and I'm not dissing any single one of them because they all have their <laughs> use of their valuable ha <laughs> But just to give you an idea, if you put Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter together, there's still not as many users there as there are on Facebook. Now, Facebook is certainly a channel if you want to reach consumers nearby you or even business people nearby you. The opportunity is 2.2 million users. Okay, the challenge is 2.2 million users. It's really hard to stand out. So what I want to hopefully help you with over the next 30 to 40 minutes is how you can improve the organic reach of your page and I want to give you some ideas for that. So the overview of today's um, training is, first of all, I'm just even going to start at the very beginning and explain what organic reach is. And the reason I'm doing this is that I trained for one whole half a day with a group of people talking incessantly about organic reach. And halfway through the day, somebody you know, tentatively raised their hands and asked me what was organic and what was reach. So I'm not going to assume anybody knows. These are terms that I'm very familiar with, and I just want to make sure everybody totally understands what, what it's about. Then we're just going to go delve a little bit deeper into organic reach and talk about maybe what you should expect from your page so that maybe you can you can set down a benchmark today of what you currently how your page currently performs organically and what you should expect um, and then i'm going to um, talk a little about the the facebook algorithm um, and and talk about like what impacts what affects organic reach um, and then we're just going to talk for two minutes about getting your page right before you actually focus on, on content. And then hopefully we'll end up with five ideas to improve the Facebook organic reach this September. Okay, organic reach. So organic reach. Organic means non-paid and reach means the number of people that saw your posts. So organic reach is the number of people that see your posts without you having to pay. So when you look at any post that's published on your Facebook page, you will see a little figure underneath it in blue. I'm just touching on it here. And that, as you can see, your organic reach for that post was 3,113 people. So that means that 3,113 people logged on to Facebook and they looked, when they looked through their newsfeed, this post appeared in their newsfeed. Most of them will have seen this post in their newsfeed rather than actually having visited my page. So that's an important point to note. When you click on the 3,913 people reached, you get more information about every post. So you get more information about how people interacted with the post. And the interactions with the post help not only ensure that more people see the post, if you, but they are in effect a vote for your post. So it tells, gives you feedback on how good your post was. How did you score? So this post you can see there was 252 reactions, comments and shares. That breaks down to 174 likes. 94 of those were on the post and 80 were on shares. So 80 weren't even on the post that came from the page. They were on, on, on uh, as a result of other people having shared the post. Um, you can see then there were 64 comments, four shares, and 254 post clicks. So that's just to give you an indication of or, what organic reach is and how you can find that information on your Facebook page. Okay, so organic reach, what should you expect? I've, had lo I've heard loads of talk about um, 
organic reach of posts being as little as 10% and that people should only expect a reach of 10%. That means that if you have a thousand likes on your page that you should only expect your post to reach 100 people. And I would say that that's quite low. And in my experience, if your content is good and if you push your content out in, in using um, really good techniques, which I can show you um, through my book or in my training courses, um, that you can expect an organic reach of, of higher than 10%. But let's just, before I ask you to check what yours is, I'm gonna ask you to do this. I just want you to look at how my page has performed over the last 10 posts. So what I did was I took the organic reach, the, the reach of each one of my posts. I divided it by the total number of likes I have on my page. So I think I have 2,140, something like that. And I multiply by 100, obviously, to get the percentage. So you can see that the lowest post on my page was the most recent. So that could even increase a little bit more. So about 28%. And some of the lower ones are about 30%. Um, but then some of them are 70, 80, and um, over 100, 183. So in fact, the average over the last 10 posts from my page is about 74%. And, and I'm quite happy with that. And that is something that is not beyond um, anybody's um, expectations in, ter in terms of their page. So what I would like you all to do now um, is maybe have a quick look um, back at your Facebook page and uh, pick out maybe not the most recent post if you've just posted it today, but maybe yesterday, the day before, or you know, in the last week or so, a post that you published, divide it by the number of page likes you have, and then multiply it by 100. I'm going to, I'm going to go back now and have a look because I'm just on my presentation at the moment. So. Will people do that for me? Okay, so organic reach. So page likes by 100. Okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I need you to do is go and find the most recent post on your page. Look okay. out underneath the post to see what the figure is in terms of how many people it reached. And then divide that by the total number of people that like your page. Multiply it by 100. Okay, you're telling me to do maths here? Hmm. <laughs> Let me see. And I'm getting messages from people who can't get into the podcast. So just one moment. Will someone else do theirs for the moment? Um, Anyone brave enough to, to share how their last post have performed? And the reason that I want you to do this is that I want this to be a benchmark. So, um, you know, hopefully this is something you can improve on. Maybe you're going to have really good results and there's no, there's no room for improvement. But it's no harm to tune into it. Any time that I look at how a post is performing, always in my head, it's in my head, has it reached, can I get, up to, get, can I get it to reach at least, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70% of the people who like my page. And that, you know, when you're always striving to, to, uh, to perform better, you, you'll end up coming up with good content and pushing it in the right way, because in effect, you're kind of scoring yourself every single time. So what I'm doing is, so I have two, so the video, no, hang on, wait now. So I did a video recently and it was back to school and being a working mom on the Women's Inspire Network Facebook page. So it says 1,974 people reached. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, more. and then. Yeah. And then how many people like that page? This is going to be a really good post. How many like the actual Women's Inspire page? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you can see, I'm not a Facebook expert at all. Uh, we're, we're, okay, so it has 1,559 1, likes. Okay, so this post is really, really good. So 1,974 divided by 1,559 multiplied by 100 equals, so 126%. So that's really good, Samantha. Um, so to achieve um, an organic reach of in excess of the number of people who like your page is really good. And what really helps that is if the content is relevant to the time of year, which yours was, um, yes. if the content is good and, and also video, because the algorithms is skewed in, in yes. favor of video. So I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to push on with this because um, we might get people to share later. So I'm I'll just going to go back honest, to the presentation. I'll just be honest, the one before that was only 116 people reached. So that's what the video, yes. <laughs> that's the difference of the video. So just want to note, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so 
Yes, yeah, so, it's, so it's no harm to tune into this. It's a really good metric to be aware of and to constantly be checking in on. Um, okay, so what we know is that that Facebook has an algorithm that is working in the background and, and that algorithm determines who sees our posts and why. So I want everybody who's tuning in and, and, and listening and, and watching, I want them to think about um, an ideal customer. Think of one person that's your ideal customer that is currently a fan of your page, that currently like your page. So I'm going to give this person a name, I'm going to call her Jamie. So when Jamie logs on to Facebook, what does she see in her newsfeed when she logs on? Well, she'll see updates from all her friends. She may have two, three, four, five hundred friends. She's going to potentially see upgrades from up, sorry, uh, updates from groups that she, she's a member of. So she could be a member of 10, 20, 30 different groups. She potentially will see updates from pages that she likes or follows. So um, she could potentially like 20, uh, 30, 40, 50 different pages. She's also going to see posts that her friends share in her newsfeed, and she's going to see sponsored posts or boost posts ads. Okay, now I know when I log, I'm just like Jamie, you know, when I log on to my Facebook page, my, sorry, my profile, I see about 10 updates. So I know that Facebook is curating the content that I see. I don't see absolutely everything from my friends, everything from, from pages I like. I don't see everything. I see what Facebook thinks I'm most interested in. And it's probably a good thing because if I logged on and I saw a whole load of rubbish, if I saw 50 or 60 posts from pages that were really poor quality, I'd have such a bad experience, I might stop using Facebook altogether. And Facebook don't want that to happen, okay? So we know that Facebook is giving, giving us the content it believes we're most interested in. Okay, now I want you to think about that, but in relation to your own Facebook page. So this is the algorithm. So when you post on your page, if your fans see it or not depends on a number of things. First of all, how often do they interact with your page? So if you have people that like your page, okay, and they stop interacting with the posts, so they interact by either liking, commenting, sharing, viewing a video, or clicking. If they stop interacting with your posts, in time, Facebook assumes they're not interested in your content and they will stop showing it to them. And that's one of the major reasons that organic reach on pages starts to diminish. However, on, um, um, the second thing then is how popular a post is in general. So if, if you publish a post on your page and people start engaging with it really quickly by liking, commenting, sharing, or clicking, Facebook knows that that content is really good. So the post that I showed you earlier on where I had a fantastic organic reach was the post where I um, had, had been told about being made one of the top 50 Facebook bloggers in the world. When I put that post up on my page, people started to engage with it really, really quickly, so within a matter of minutes. So the algorithm in the background knows this content must be good and it will show it to more people. So sometimes if you publish a post like that and people start engaging with it, it may, that post may actually reach fans of your page who haven't seen your content in a while. Um, also, if there are people on, on your page and your, their friends also like, comment and share on your posts, they're more likely to see it. And Facebook also knows um, the type of interest, uh, type of content, the type of post you're interested in. So if let's say Samantha posts a video and you really always love watching videos, they're more likely to show you that type of content. And also worth noting that Facebook prioritizes video and it prioritizes above video Facebook Live. So that's the Facebook algorithm. And what I really want you to take from that is that poor engagement equals poor reach. So engagement is when people like, comment, share, or even just click. So the easiest form of engagement to try and achieve is the simple click. There are a lot of, a lot of lurchers out there on Facebook. There are a lot of people who don't like to leave a trace. So they will come and they will look at your content. They will click to view it. They will click to see more. They will click on all your, your, your images if you have a few different images, and they may not like, comment, share. Um, and don't take it personally if they don't. People are, are quick, they're, in, you know, they're, they're busy, they're in a hurry, they're flicking down through their phones, they have barely any time to, to, to give to you. But if they're interested, they will click through and have a look. So sometimes focusing on getting that click can be the easiest engagement to achieve. 
So before we go on to working on the content, I just want to think a very quick slide about getting your foundations right on your page. So before you start working hard on putting out really good content and trying to, to increase the organic reach, it's really important that your page is set up properly and that if people start clicking through to check you out, that you're really leading with the right foot, you know, that you're really representing your business well. So what I want you to think about, and this is just a quick 10 things to think about, Make sure your profile picture is good. It should be your logo or it should, if you're a solopreneur, it should be your cover. It should be a headshot, a professional headshot. Your cover picture or video um, should be a good representation of your brand. And while your profile picture doesn't change, your cover picture um, can be seasonal. So what's happening this September, this autumn? Can you, can you change your cover picture? And when you change your cover picture, click into it and give it a little description because it does um, it does create a post on your page as well when you change your cover picture. Make sure your long and your short description um, communicate your unique selling proposition. So if somebody clicks through to check you out, that you're doing yourself, you're serving, you're doing yourself justice. Make sure you've claimed your username, your call to action, turn on messaging. People are really, really, really um, happy um, to message pages and, and to look for business or to ask for quotes. They're really comfortable doing that now. So make sure that you're not losing out if you haven't got your messaging turned on. If you have native videos on your page, make one of them a featured video. It takes a prominent position at the top of your page. And it's a really good thing to do. Make sure your page tabs are well organized. And if there are any tabs that are out of date, like a welcome message from five years ago that no longer works, get rid of it. Um, you can do this under edit page, simply go in and turn off that tab. And make sure your reviews are turned on and you want to, um, to, to, to encourage people to post reviews. So other than that, I want you to, your, your, your content to be customer focused. And I also want you to start thinking about having some smart goals. Okay, so what should we expect from social media, from Facebook? Okay. First of all, Facebook is not a place to bombard prospective customers with ads or sales posts. If your Facebook page is made up of ads, ads, sales post after sales post, you will find that the organic reach of your page will be low, okay? And it will diminish over time. Facebook is a place, see it, I want you to start seeing it as a place to connect with customers and potential customers. And I also want you to see it as a place where you can build relationships with customers and potential customers. Because when you change your mindset in terms of what the, the function that the Facebook can serve for your business, you'll, all, you'll also change and how you produce content for your Facebook page. So our role as marketeers for our business, um, using Facebook and any social media channels, is to get our brand in front of our customers and our potential customers. So that when they have a requirement for what we sell that they think of us. We do not have to be selling all the time. If we are selling all the time, we, you will find that you'll just alienate people and they won't even want to connect with you. What you need to think about it is when somebody comes into your place of business or calls you up on the phone or meets you at an event, you know, you, you chat to them, you have conversations, You're, you don't just try and sell to them all, to the, all the time. And what you need to do is to think about your social media channel in that regard as well. Okay, so what should we expect? We want people just to brand awareness. We want to see Facebook as a place where people can, you, you, we just continually remind them that we're there, okay? So now with, with that in mind, I want you to bring you to the content funnel and we'll start coming up with different ideas for content. Okay, so this is my content funnel. So we're gonna have awareness content, consideration content, sales content, and loyalty content. And I'm gonna bring you a few, a few examples of each type of content. So the first one is awareness content. This is what I call the social content. This is the light content. This is the content that your fans will love to engage with. And it annoys me that when I put this type of content out, it's more popular than if I put, let's say, some tips and advice, which is consideration content. So let me just show you a few examples. Here's a post from my page. This is awareness or social content. So I brought the dog to the dog groomer. She, at the time, um, was putting all these lovely little colors on the on, on dogs so I got it done with my brand colors and uh, brought the dog home great fun everyone thought it was hilarious and took photographs of the dog 
put it up on my Facebook page on, I think it was the Friday of the bank holiday, and it got an organic reach of 1,742 people. So that was 81% organic reach. So, so there's a typical type of, of, of content. I'm not selling anything. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just reminding people that I'm there. I'm connecting with them. Um, and, um, and it was just a little bit of fun. So that, and that was that, that post performed really well for me. Here's another, um, here's some more um, awareness or social content. So Rachel Quinn Ceramics, she, you know, everybody goes away for a few days. And so she just posted some photographs of a place she had visited in Switzerland. And I know from talking to Rachel in one of my training courses that that post performed particularly well on her page. It performed well because people even had to click in to look at the photos. So that's another reason. The more people clicking, the more people Facebook will show it to. Them. Here's another post, Savory Fair in Athlone. And um, here's a post that was published on Friday, uh, one Friday afternoon of a lady, who, Lorraine, who has been working in the business for 20 years. And, and the post is just simply saying, you know, congratulations to Sh Lorraine. She's been working with us 20 years. Now, Lorraine is really well loved by that business's customers. So they, when they saw the post going up, they liked, they commented, they shared. It was absolutely, you can see there from the post, wonderful, wonderful engagement on that post. And the more people that engaged, the more people Facebook showed that to, the longer it stayed in the news feed. So there was a reach on that post of over 20,000 people, even though the page, I think, has about 6,000 page likes. Again, not selling anything, not, you know, not telling you about a daily special, just simply connecting and reminding people that they're there. Um, here's another awareness content, Matt Jones Woodturner. So putting the family into the family business today. And, and like that, that po post, very simple, didn't take that long to do, you know, but performed really well in the newsfeed. Um, and here's another the last awareness content I'll show you. So delighted to have been selected as one of the top 50 Facebook marketing blogs on the web. And you can see there the organic reach was 3913, so a reach of 183%. And like that, I'm not selling anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not even positioning, well, I am positioning myself, but it was just awareness content that, you know, that, that content that people like to engage with, that nice social content. Okay, so awareness or social content, it's like having the chat. It's connecting with your audience. It's content your audience find easy to engage with. And remember, it still has an impact on brand awareness and keeps you top of mind. So here are some ideas. So for this, I wanted you to come up with five ideas after this training course. So I want you to come up with at least two ideas for awareness and social content. So have you been to any events now, recently, in the last while, or coming up this month? like the races. So let's say if you're going to the races or to a wedding, you know, you're going to have your hair done, you're going to have your makeup done, you're going to have a nice dress on. Take a photograph and put it up on your Facebook page. You'll be surprised at how well it does. Even if you're tra attending any trade fairs or any events at all, networking events, take a photograph of people you're with, tag them in it, tag their business page and push that out on your, on, on your page. What's going on in your life? Have you a child starting school or starting college? Um, now you may not want to share photographs of your, of your children on, on your Facebook page, or you may. I mean, I don't overdo it, I hope, but I, I usually put a photograph up of the kids going back to school. Um, it's like if somebody came to my house or somebody came to my place of business um, and my children were there, I wouldn't hide them. I wouldn't hide them in, in a in another room. So um, yeah, so what's going on in, in your life? Are you starting a new course? You know, don't be afraid to share that, to share that with, with your audience as well. Even if you're doing something as simple as going for a walk on the beach or a walk in the woods, you know, and you see a nice photograph of a sunrise, a sunset, um, an, an autumnal theme, um, those type of posts go down really well. I know that I have taken photographs of myself and the dog on a Saturday morning, going on the beach for a run, and that gets really high reach compared to some of my posts where I'm trying to teach people stuff. Um, but it's the type of content. Louise, can I just interrupt you there for one second? Um, you're absolutely, this is brilliant, by the way. Uh, but there is a question from Anna, and she has to leave now. So is it okay if we just answer that question before she leaves? Because yeah. she won't be here yeah, no problem. Um, the question is, um, I recently, sorry, I'll just click it. I recently started doing Facebook Live and my reach jumped to over 900 people per video with about 
150 to 170 views. Not sure I can do this every day. Any recommendations to maintain my organic reach when I change the frequency of the Facebook Live? Um, You're just going to have to do them every day. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Actually, well, really, um, sorry, who, who asked the question? Anna, was it? Anna, yes, yeah. Hi, Anna. Um, what I would say to you is um, it's not really about frequency, it's more about quality. So um, don't feel that you need to be posting too frequently. Um, what we know is that Facebook Live works and that, that, that the algorithm is skewed in your favor when you do Facebook Live. So maybe, you know, pulling back on the frequency, but maybe try and increase the reach of each post. Mm. So I know what really works well for Facebook Live is that if you do like a promo post in it before, you know, maybe two or three days before to let people know that you're going to be going live and give them a reason to tune in. Why should they come in? Why, why, should, the, why should they come to and, and listen to your show? because it, it's all about them, you know, so as long as you can give them a reason, you know, they'll be more likely to attend. Um, and, and they're the types of posts that I would boost. So even if you boost it to people who like your page, because they're the people that are your warmest audience and they're the people that are most likely to tune in. And then the other thing you can do when you're live is to encourage people to, to comment and to share and to tag other people and to, and to help build your audience. Um, so, so, so that's, that's, that's what I would say in, in relation to Facebook Live. It's certainly not about frequency, it's about quality. So don't think you have to overdo it and push out too much content. What you need to do is just make sure that you put the right content at the right time to the right audience and that you really build that audience. Well done. Thank you, Louise. Excellent point. And just another comment, just while you continue, you're talking about walking in the woods and the beach and those photographs. And I just wanted to do a little comment that actually that's very similar to Twitter, isn't it? About the fact that they're positive things, Louise, that you're coming out with nice, positive stuff that people can identify with as well. That's so true. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the social content, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's stuff that people people like to engage with that type of content and it's 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 really helping your brand because it's just reminding people you're there you know and, and that's what it's all about just keep reminding them that you're there and then when they click through and they look at your about us then that they know what you do and they know how you can help them you know so okay. um, any other questions I I yeah go ahead I, i'll i'll plow on so um okay so where were we saying um out and about, yeah. So if you're out and about and, and, and you can take a photograph or share a, a 10 second video, um, that's really good content as well. Um, and then maybe an inspirational meme or um, a quote or um, so a funny, something that's funny, um, it works really well as well. So what you need to do is to kind of think about the time of year. So if you can find some, some funny meme or inspirational quote around going back to school or empty nests or anything to do with autumn, you will find that that will be um, quite popular because it's what's going to resonate with your audience and what's going on in their lives as well. So just look at that, uh, that particular page and, and try and think of two ideas for your own page this month. Um, and, and that's the type of content that should absolutely fly. Okay, so the next, so we've, so we've kind of looked at the awareness content. So now I want to just talk a little bit about a consideration content. So consideration content, or sometimes I like to call this expert content. And this is content where you position yourself as an expert to your audience. So I have a few examples to show you here that I love. And um, this is a, a, a video that um, Neve uh, produced on Sanctum Therapy Facebook page. Now this page has, has had only about 600 likes on it at the time, so very small page. And what she did was, and um, the, the business specializes in um, um, therapy for pregnant and fertility and um, alternative therapies for fertility, pregnancy and, and babies. And what she simply did was recorded a one minute video where she's actually showing people how they can relieve teething pain for babies themselves. But, you know, she's going to train them by watching this video to do it. So this, this content really positioned Neve as an expert because it actually showed she, kn she knew her stuff. Yeah. And not only that, but she was, she was helping her audience. 
So what happens is if you're at home with a baby that's crying because it's teething and you see this post, first of all, you're quite likely to watch it. Second of all, if you have friends who are at the same stage of you with crying baby who are teething or sisters or cousins or whatever, you're likely to share or tag them in a post. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that really helps the, the reach of the post go beyond just the people who like the page. So you can see there that the, the, the video has nearly 7,000 views, okay, from a Facebook page that has 600 likes, and the reach of the post was over 12,500 people. Okay, so I can't even do the percentage, but it's certainly well over 100. Um, so this is an example of content that's useful to the ideal customer, to the target audience. And not only does it, does it get really good views for Neve, but it warms people up to her brand and they're much more likely to use her services having, a, having watched something like this. So that's the consideration content. Here is one of myself and a uh, certain Samantha Kelly. <laughs> so I do a Facebook Live on my Facebook page every second week. And what I, it's called social chat. Um, and what I try and do is invite experts on just to have a little chat about their area of expertise. And like that, um, this is great consideration content. Um, it's useful to my target audience and it's, it's content that's going to help them. And by helping them, I'm, I'm warming them to my brand. Um, and you can see there, the reach of it was like, I know I paid, some of it is paid, but it's about three and a half thousand organic reach and maybe a little bit more than that um, paid reach. But this is really good content and it positions you as an expert. So, so that's the type of consideration content. And here's an example then of somebody who had written a blog on, on their websites and it's like five tips, five simple steps on how to eliminate separation anxiety in your dog. So this is lovely evergreen content and PetMD can share this content ever so often. It's not going to go out of date and it's useful um, content to, to, to the ideal customer and you're going to warm them up as a result. Um, here's Hop, Spot, Hop Scotch Children's Clothing, and they're even just giving advice on, you know, how to put outfits together for, kids, for children. And that's the type of content that goes down really well for retailers. If you can help people, you know, match a, a shirt and a trousers and a lipstick and, a, and, and, a, and, and accessories, people love that type of content. It's helpful to them and they're more likely to engage with it. Okay, so um, consideration or expert content. What are your top tips? What advice can you give to your ideal customer? What's going to be useful to your ideal customer? It's not about you, it's about them. It's not what you want to say, it's how you're going to help them. What's relevant to your audience now? What's relevant in September? How can, how can you show all, everything that you know and position yourself as an expert? And remember, you can do it in a blog article or a video or a Facebook Live. And all that you're trying to do is to remind people that you're there and to keep your brand top of mind. So that's the consideration or expert content. So I would like everybody to think about this. Think about it in terms of timing. Think about it um, in terms of um, September. So what is most relevant to your customer this month? And come up with content for for consideration content. So we've looked at awareness and consideration. Now we're going to go to sales. And this should be the easiest type of content because it's the content that people like to, to push out the most. So here's an example, the perfect dress, buy it here, okay? When it comes up to, to your sales content, you need to think about what is your proposition? Why should somebody buy from you? What makes you different? And then what you need to do is you need to capture your target customer's attention with first five words of your post, okay? And then you need to find, to find an image or video that's gonna stop them in their tracks as they're scrolling down the Facebook newsfeed. And then you need to really be clear what you want them to do next. Is it visit your website? Is it call you? Is it message you? What is it that you want them to do? So come up with one idea for sales content and make sure that you consider all the elements um, in this so, so that you produce a really, really good sales post. Um, and then the last type of content I want to talk to you about is loyalty content or um, advocate content. So this is, uh, I suppose the good example of this is when somebody actually goes and puts a post, on, um, a review on your Facebook page, and hopefully it's a five-star review. When somebody posts a review on my Facebook page, I screenshot it, 
I bring it into um, Canva or um, into Microsoft Paint um, and I create a JPEG of it so that I can share it on my Facebook page on every other sing single social media network because it's a third party endorsement and when you say you're great, it's one thing, but when other people say you're great, it's much, much more powerful. So well, here's another example here. This is, so this, that's an example there of somebody posting a review. Here's Matt Jones Wood Turner again, and um, he just copied and pasted um, a review that he received on his, on his store. So like that, that's nice loyalty content. If somebody sends you a thank you card in the post, take a photograph of the thank you card, you don't have to show the inside of it, and post yeah. that on your page um, as a nice loyalty post. Yeah. So what I want everybody to do that's tuning in, you know, am I? Perfect. I want everybody. No, it's great, I'm loving it. I want everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I want everybody to come up with one idea for loyalty or advocate content on your page. So I want everybody to try and get at least one review on your Facebook page this September. So make sure your, the review section is turned on, you, on your page. And then think about people that you can ask to do a review for you. So I would actually handpick these people. And, and I think that you also systematically need to get it into your head. So either you, and if you have people working for you, that if somebody comes down and comes and they, they give you feedback and they say, wow, you know, that was so good. I really enjoyed that. Or thank you so much. It was much more than I expected. That straight away you say, would you mind posting a review on the page? Now, now nine times out of 10 people will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll never get around to doing it. But one person potentially will. So if you don't ask, you don't get. So I really want everybody to think about who they can ask to do a review on your page and then screenshot the review and, you know, make a big deal about it. So there are the five ideas for content. I want you to come up with five, uh, two ideas for awareness or social content. So that is the walk on the beach, your um, um, at a wedding, at the races, uh, starting back to school, um, an inspirational meme, um, funny joke. So nice social content. You need two ideas for that. One consideration post. So one post positioning yourself as an expert, giving really good advice to your ideal customer and think of the advice in terms of what's relevant in September. Um, one sales post and one loyalty post. Um, and that is it. It. So we have kind of looked at what organic reach is, what you should expect, what impacts or effects of organic reach, um, getting the foundations of your page right, and then thinking about the content funnel. And then we looked at five ideas to improve the organic reach. So I'm just going to pop back here now so I can see you. So that is it. Has anyone any more questions? Oh, well, first of all, Louise, well done. That was awesome. And I think everyone will agree. I, I learned so much from that. And I have to say, it's great because it's actually made me realize, you know what, I actually never really post on my Facebook page. So give me a slap on the hand next time you see me. Um, but I do have uh, questions here, Louise, and I really do appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy lady. So um, I'm just going to start answering one of them here. It's um, is uh, D O'Leary has asked: Is a Facebook live video daily too much? I would have taught weekly. So I think you kind of answered that though after she'd asked the questions. Um, but I think weekly is good. Yeah. Yeah. The only for a daily, vi I mean, I would think it really depends on your page and it depends on on your subject matter. So if you are a let's say. Um, a fitness expert and you want to like September is a really good time because people are motivated in September to do something around fitness and if you wanted to you could do you know every day at lunchtime I'm going to do 10 minutes tune in live um, but I would only do it you know for sure you know for a week at a time you don't want to overdo it either the only way you will know is look at the organic reach and if you see the organic reach beginning to fall then um, you know you're overdoing it I worked with a lady and she had a retail store and she used to do a Facebook Live the same time every week. And I thought it was too much and I said it to her. But, but then when we went back and examined the performance of each of the posts, they performed really well. So there's your answer. Look at the reach. Look how the post performs. And if you're, if you're holding on to the audience and building an audience, keep going. But if you're not, pull back. Excellent. This was so helpful, Julian has said as well. And Barina has said that too. And she's my guest today from Get Design Wizard, which is um, would be Canva 
but they're based in Cork. So I'd love you guys to start using Get Design Wizard instead of uh, Canva. Maybe have a look. And we're probably going to do a crowdcast about that anyway. So uh, it's welcome, Brina. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm wondering, here's another question, Louise, before you go. Um, I'm wondering, now this is a, from Roisin, Mysterious Boxes. I don't know if you know Roisin from Mysterious Boxes, Louise. Beautiful boxes that get delivered to you once a month with all these goodies and organic goodies and stuff in them. Um, I'm wondering, in order to create a relationship, do I have to post it personal information? I've never had any form of social media until we decided to go for it and launch our business. It's the thing I struggle most with. Is it a case of just do it? I will if it will help the business. Thanks. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, I mean, I don't share all the intimate details of my life. OK, I'm not asking you to do that. Or some people might share more than others. But, you know, if you're out and about going for a walk on the beach or going to the races and you take a photograph of yourself, it's only a snapshot, you know, um, and and it's social enough. So what I would say is, you know, share about what you're comfortable with, okay? Um, but I know that social content um, works. Um, it kind of annoys me because I think our consideration content should work more, but that, that's just human beings. What I will say to you as well, and just, just um, um, you said that you don't use social media yourself. Um, in the real world, the way word of mouth works is that your friends and your family um, are the first people to refer people to you in, in terms of your business and it's the same on social media so if you if you don't use Facebook and you have a profile with two or three friends you're going to find it much harder to grow your page likes because your, your, your Facebook friends and your family will be the first people who share on your content so um, don't you know that's the only thing I would say to you. I mean, I, I obviously it, it's all very personal, and if you don't want to use Facebook personally, that's fine. But if you if you use Facebook personally, you'll find it easier. And here's a good example: I was doing a mentoring session last week with um, an engineer in Leitrim, and we set up the Facebook page during the during the session, and I just got him to invite all his Facebook friends there and then. And when I got home and I checked how his page was performing, the very next day he had 200 likes on his page. So that's the difference, you know, and if you're starting off with no Facebook friends, 200 likes is like, you know, climbing a mountain. Whereas if you can at least get your friends who will be the first people to go, yeah, she's great, she's brilliant, I recommend her. And remember, that's what happens in the real world through word of mouth anyway. Yeah, and I often say that uh, Twitter is word of mouth on speed because you're not just, they're not yeah. just 10 friends, they're telling potentially thousands of people about you and your product. And uh, another, Roisin, for yourself as well, you know, you know, you don't have to put too much personal stuff up. You don't have to, but I find that, that they like, people like to see a little bit of behind the scenes. They like to see, do you know what I'd love to see, you know, um, maybe it doesn't have to be the first day of school or something but maybe something like you know just got this delivery of flowers um i'm a lucky girl or something you know it's things like this yeah. that make you feel happy about you know or maybe something that's in season like when you see the leaves on the ground i mean just take a picture of the or, of the chestnuts you collected with the kids you don't have to put the kids in you could have the, the bowl of the chestnuts you know that the conquers or whatever you know that kind of thing so you don't actually have to have the children in it um like little things like the dog i mean i'm sure the dog doesn't mind <laughs> being in the pictures but you know it's just i suppose i understand where you're coming from but a lot of people that fear is real and i do understand it and mm. actually it's probably the only thing that stops most businesses going on social media is fear like, would you agree, Louise? Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a client actually, she defined it for me. She said that, um, I, I used to be saying to her, just go for it, just go for it. Just, you know, you're, all, you're always going to be have a little bit of fear when you start. And the only way that you get over that is actually by doing. And don't worry that if you, you start doing and it's not perfect because you learn as you go. So um, actually, she, she, she rang me then one day and she said that she had the well feck it moment. So, you know, <laughs> where she was sitting there with her fingers over the keyboard and she just went, well, 
back it. And she said, I'll say, I'll just go to go for it. And if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But like, she's really successful on her page. She's been doing it a few years now. So don't expect to get it right when you start. Don't put that level of uh, pressure on yourself. Yeah. Just do, go for it and try different things. I mean, I tried to put a funny post up on my page, a humorous one, and it just bombed. So I actually took it down and said, I'd never do that type of post again. But you don't know till you try, you know? It's like I remember speaking at an event and the person that came after me started, I was kind of quite funny and, you know, and, and I was saying some funny things. And then the person after me kind of tried to do the same and it just didn't work because he wasn't me and I couldn't do what he does because he was doing something about numbers or something. I don't know. So just with, go with your strengths. If your strengths are, I know you had the place lovely packaging and, 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 and you had a package lovely and stuff. I mean, you could even show us your process when you go to buy your stock. You could say, you know, this is why I choose this ribbon, because this ribbon, I buy it down in such and such a shop. Here's Mary, you know, just went in to buy more ribbon or whatever. We like seeing that kind of stuff, don't we? Exactly. It's the social. It's the having the chat, having the chat content. Um, and, and it still keeps you top of mind. You don't need to be selling every time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Louise, I have to say on behalf of everybody here and the people that are watching the replay, we get a lot of people watching the replay. Is there any way we can help you, Louise? And is there any links you'd like us to look at or is there any way that we can support you? Because we really appreciate this, uh, this presentation this morning. Well, thank you. Do you know what I'd really love? Um, on my um, on my website, on my or my I have the book pre-order page. Even if you just share that page for me, there's a social share buttons are on the page, just even to let people know. Um, it's a very practical book. It, it'll help people. And, um, you know, it, I would be grateful if people could do that for me. Um, and I have a Facebook. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I have a Facebook live, Facebook live show on Thursday night with Danielle and Sir Pico, um, mind coach um, and NLP trainer. And so we're going to talk about mindset for success. I saw um, Danielle at the Women Inspire event last November or October. Was it October, November? And um, so I'm going to be live on my Facebook page at nine o'clock chatting to Danielle on, um, just for a chat just on, on Thursday night. If you wanted to tune in, you're more than welcome. And just another thing um, I mentioned about um, buyer personas. Um, which is um, like it's really really important it's, and it's, it's it's usually what people don't want to do my last Facebook live was, was with an, an expert Adele um, Ravella Adele Ravella she's one of the worldwide experts on customer personas and she gives some really good advice so that's worth checking out as well she has a unique approach to creating buyer personas and um, that's on my Facebook page so you're very welcome to come and check it out but I just want to take this opportunity to thank you Samantha um, for um, giving me this platform and um and I, I was absolutely delighted and i'm delighted to help anyone at any time and can i just point out to people that are watching that don't realize the power of the network and the power of networking in general myself and louise like our journey we started did we meet online first louise or did we meet at that yeah networking? yeah i don't i know yeah we met online first and then that relationship we kept in touch Louise would help me out maybe with a retweet and that kind of kept her on my re radar and then when it came to social media so much I knew that she was doing good stuff with Facebook and then Facebook speaker was mentioned and I went hmm, sure you know Louise you know so when you keep in someone's head that's the person that pops into your head when something happens and then she asked me could she interview me on her um, be live and I did that and now this is being done. So this is the power, ladies, of helping each other and supporting each other. Because Louise might be at an event where they say, well, yeah, we'll have you for Facebook, but do you know anyone that does Twitter? Who do you think is the first person she's going to think of? You know, and, and that's what it's all about. It's all about keeping in people's subconscious, whether you're providing value, whether you're just helping someone else with a retweet or by sharing their post and by clicking that link on her pre-order. I just tweeted it and I've just put it on Facebook right now. So these are, kind of things, these are the kind of things that we can all do for each other. So if any of you ever need any help, like that, just reach out to us. And thank you, Louise. Thank you for your time. This was powerful. We might actually put this one on YouTube as an open one so people can see. So that might help you as well, Louise. So um, we'll talk, I'll talk to Marie about that later. So thanks, guys. Thanks for everything. And um, have a great day. And Louise, um, have a, the best luck with your business. We'll see you on the group anyway. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone.
Okay, bye. Bye.